Welcome back. Well, today we have an interesting uh, subject. When we look at the thumbnail, um, JW Org lies, lies, lies. Tolerance, how can the Bible help? And a whole group of people are saying none of us can leave this damned religion. None of us can leave. And that's a fact. Uh, when we look at the uh, JW Org website today, we have this new article, Does the Bible Promote Tolerance? Uh, the answer might not be what you expect. And folks, when I looked at this, it wasn't what I expected, their answer. It wasn't. So I just kind of thumbed through it, and uh, I was surprised they used a UN, UNICEFCO, UNICEFCO, uh, this uh, UN uh, portion. They, they like to quote the UN, you notice that, when it suits them. And then uh, in another breath, they call them uh, the wild beast, the scarlet-colored wild beast. Anyways, uh, they go on to talk about tolerance and how the UN wants tolerance, of course. So they want to look good. So this tells me that this article is to make these guys look good in front of the UN. Probably one of their advisors told them to make this article. So they go on to talk about all of this, uh, Bible respect, what the Bible says about hate, and you know, it makes them look really good as a religion. The Bible verses related to tolerance, respect, you know, all the scriptures that you could find. And then this is what surprised me. This blew me away. Are Jehovah's Witnesses tolerant of other people and religions? Okay, let's read this whole box. Some view our preaching work as proof that we are intolerant of others' beliefs. However, we respect others' people's right to their convictions. And we also refrain from imposing our views on others. Well, isn't that what their Bible study is all about? They impose their views on others. <clears throat> they have a program about that. But anyways, they say to find out we, why we contact people who already have a religion, read this article. Then they go on to say, we do not force anyone. I'm going to blow this up because this is probably the most important part of this whole thing. Here it is, right above my head there. We do not force anyone to be come or remain one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't force you to remain as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. In other words, they don't handcuff you. They don't lock you in a room. Nothing like that. You're not forced physically. But what about mentally? Now, it goes on to say, if a person wants to resign from being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, it says there that we respect that person's choice. So we're going to look at what kind of respect Jehovah's Witnesses have for people that want to resign, and uh, we're going to see. We're going to let you, as the audience, see if they actually respect that person's choice. They go on to say, however, some may wonder if Jehovah's Witnesses are tolerant of others' beliefs. Why do they expel and shun some who used to worship with them? See, then they quote this scripture. We, we look at this scripture. It's coming up. Just give it a minute, a minute here. Okay, so there's a scripture. Uh, but now I'm writing to you to stop keeping company with anyone called a brother who is sexually or moral, immoral or greedy person or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even eating with such a person. Now, when someone wants to leave this organization, like myself, <clears throat> and who wanted to continue to worship Jehovah God on its own terms, on his own terms, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, they said, no, they disassociate me. So here, uh, there's no grounds for it. This, this is about a brother committing uh, sexual immorality, a greedy person, idolater, reviler, drunkard. I wasn't any of those. And a lot of people that want to leave this religion, they're just like the people here in the thumbnail. Just normal people in the religion, and they can't leave the darn religion. Now, and there's no scriptural reference to hold them in there. The, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses can't find any. 
but yet they they throw this scripture out when people want to just leave. So I went to to this do Jehovah's Witnesses shun those who belong to their religion. I went on to their site disassociated. Can a person resign uh, from being becoming a JW? They they like to kind of say you can, but then you can't. You can't. You know. Um, questions from the readers. You see, no one wants to be disassociated. That's that's a bad word. This is questions from the readers. My son, who was baptized as a teenager, is now married, has a family. You know, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's not a fornicator. He got married, has a family. Uh, because of the pressure of earning a living, he has cooled off spiritually, does not associate with the congregation. Should he be viewed as a disassociated person? You see, they have all kinds of articles on this. So now, if we go over to this, we show love by su supporting Jehovah's discipline. They flip this scripture out again at us, this First Corinthians, and uh, they flip uh, verse 11 especially. Stop keeping company with anyone who is a brother. Right there. So yeah, the uh, this questions from the readers I was showing you, it's all about disassociation as thumbing through there. So here we're into this article. We show love by supporting Jehovah's discipline. They throw out this scripture again. And then they throw out this video, maintain loyalty. We're going to take a quick look at this video and uh, see what it has to say. I'm going to have to stay on the screen here and uh, talk part ways through it because I don't want to get a copyright. My name is Gabriella. Ben and I have always enjoyed attending the meetings. But lately, it's been difficult. Something was missing. Our son. There's a lot of drama through this video. Um, you'll notice they, they have this slow, dramatic music, tears crying. These are all actors. Long and the short of it is this boy here, he just decided he doesn't want to be a JW. That's their son. They're giving him a lot of pressure. He just doesn't want to be a JW. My kids went through that. My kid, my one boy. And, uh, you, you just have to let them do their own thing. So here, this guy, this kid couldn't handle the pressure at home so he moves out and uh they're reading the letter they're all just torn up you know the kids moved out so what has he done he's disassociated himself and they're gonna go back to the kingdom hall and they're gonna listen to this big drama on how um quora uh disassociated herself or himself whatever you're gonna see it i'm gonna play it but it's all drama crying and people are all crying at the kingdom hall because you left well, that's not what it is folks you know what people do i'm uh, at the kingdom hall they they go up to you hey what's happened to brother hool have you heard what happened to him yeah he fell out of the truth that's that's what they talk about at the kingdom hall hey, hey is so and so still in the truth you know the in the truth thing such a big thing and, and and is he in the lie now is he in the truth in the lie in the truth you know, they play those games. Uh, I, I, I played those games at the hall myself with uh, various so-called brothers and sisters and elders and pioneers and ministerial servants. And sometimes they're the worst playing these, these games. And uh, people aren't treated as human. You know, they leave for whatever reason, whatever happens, they're guilty. They're automatically assumed guilty just because they left. And uh, so they dramatize the whole thing, trying to make it uh, show you and I as the audience how torn up the family is. This just really tears up the family. So now he's calling. The kid's calling, right? Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the volume back on. I'm going to mute myself. Here we go. I'm going to actually just move. Uh, uh, I'm good on the screen here. Let's just go.
it just got harder. I knew what the Bible said about quit mixing in company with anyone who is not living according to Christian standards. So, does this not sound contrary to the article I just read about tolerance and to tolerance? How Jehovah's Witnesses are tolerant? Well, here this woman, this is a training video, folks. This is all acting for Jehovah's Witnesses to teach them how to respond to their kid when their kid doesn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. This woman ignored him. That's the worst thing you can do to an 18-year-old, a young boy. Young boys are close to their mothers. That's psychologically damaging Jehovah's Witness, jw.org. And you're lying about your other article. Your other article says you're allowed to leave. This training video shows that you have to shun him, your kid. And it doesn't show the kid's a fornicator or anything, drunkard or any of those things. He just decided he didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. So let's see. But I never thought that scripture would one day apply to me. Later that evening, a brother was talking about the example of Korah's sons. Jehovah confirmed that he was using Moses to lead his people, not Korah. When the people were told to move away from the rebels' tents, what would Korah's sons do? Would they put loyalty to family ahead of loyalty to Jehovah? The Bible tells us that his sons remained loyal to Jehovah and were blessed for it. That night, after the meeting, I told Ben about the text I received from Levi. I told him everything. How I miss Levi so much, but that I also wanted to be loyal to Jehovah, like Korah's sons. Ben admitted that he too had been struggling with feelings like mine. But then, he said something that I hadn't thought of. If we were to stand between Levi and the discipline he needs, we would in effect be blocking an expression of Jehovah's love from reaching him. In fact... Okay, I just wanted to stop there. Okay, so did you get all the sly doctrine indoctrination in this video? Uh, so, contrary to JW Org's website feature article today on intolerance and on how they treat disassociated ones disassociated ones are free to go they can kind of come, come and go well that's not what this video is saying this video is teaching the people the congregation to disassociate to disfellowship to shun to remove themselves from anybody that just walks away. You know, this kid didn't commit fornication, didn't commit adultery, he's not a reviler, not a drunkard. He just simply didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. And you can't do that without consequences in this religion. So if you're a government official out there or anybody affiliated with the government and, and you know Jehovah's Witnesses are trying to push this at the UN, and they're trying to say that they, they, they don't shun. This is a complete lie. Let's just look a little bit more at this. It's our very loyalty to Jehovah that could save his life. We agreed to continue to put our trust in Jehovah. So, so they just go on to talk about uh, how they, they're going to continue to be loyal to Jehovah. They're going to continue to shun the kid. She's going to go out and be a pioneer and spend all her time not... Not on getting to know her grandchildren or, or uh, following her son's journey, being a part of her son's life. She's going to go out, canvas for more JWs at the door as a pioneer. She's going to ignore her son and put all those hours in looking for more new people while her son needs her attention and support. So you see, folks, uh, JW Org, they're lying to us all. They're lying about how they're shunning. They're lying about how they're allowing people in. This is a training video. 
And basically, Jehovah is the Watchtower. So, oh, who, if you love the Watchtower, you hate people that leave. You know, there, there's not, not even anything in this scripture, Psalms 97 and 10, that even applies to this boy leaving, his, uh, leaving the religion, leaving the Watchtower. Nothing in here. And uh, if he left the Watchtower, maybe he left for good reason. Maybe he knows about a lot of the CSA. Have we thought of that? You see, so we go back to JW Org's article. Uh, they say, however, some may wonder, uh, or they say, we do not force. Here's where they say, we do not force anyone to become or remain one of Jehovah's Witnesses. End of sentence. So if that's not force, folks, I don't know what force is. You know, if, if this boy wants to uh, leave Jehovah's Witnesses and he's shunned by his parents, boy, that's a lot of force. That's a lot of psychological force. And it goes on forever. There's no end to this. And it's not just here, folks. I'm going to take you to the elders book because everyone has to see this. This is uh, determining whether a judicial committee should be formed. And uh, though it's, uh, this is number 17 under that section in the elders book. Now it says, though it's not an exhaustive list, brazen conduct may in indeed be involved in the following if a wrongdoer has insolent and contemptuous attitudes made evidence by a practice of these things. So if one of the members of the congregation uh, has unnecessary, number one, unnecessary association with a disfellowshipped or a disassociated individual. So disassociated is treated the same as disfellowshipped. So uh, this guy leaves, you don't, you don't commit fornication, you're not a drunkard reviler, you still study the Bible, you still worship God, you're still a good neighbor, you still love Jesus, you just don't want to be associated with the congregation, uh, they call you disassociated. Your is good. They, they equal you to a murderer or a fornicator or an adulterer. That's what you're equal to. So you cannot leave this religion. There's, in fact, 55 points in this elder's book on how to deal with disassociated people. Uh, it goes on to say, if a publisher in the congregation is known to have unnecessary association with a disfellowshipped or disassociated relatives who are not in the household, elders should use the scriptures to counsel and reason with him. You see, they call this a sin. They call this a sin in this re religion. And then they go through all these books. And, and here's what it says. If it is clear that the Christian is violating the spirit of disfellowshipping decree in this regard and does not respond to the council, he would not qual qual qualify for congregation privileges. So he can't comment. He's going to lose all his privileges. Everyone's going to know there's something wrong. Something wrong. All he did was talk to his brother who quit, who quit going, the guy in the video. He just talked to him, went out to a movie with him or something. And they're just going to work him over. He's, he's in good standing. They're going to strip him of all his privileges. And then they go on to say, which require one to be exemplary. So he's no longer exemplary. He's a piece of shit in the congregation. You feel like a piece of shit. I felt like that watchtower for no reason at all. They made me feel like the worst piece of shit you could feel like. And I excuse my French folks. But when this happens to you and you see these articles, these lies come out on JW Org, this, this gets you a bit riled. These guys are just lying and playing with the press. They're playing with the countries such as Norway. They're playing with the Human Rights Commission. This is nothing but BS and lies. This is right from their elders book. Uh, it's, it goes on to say he would not be dealt with judicially. And here's the caveat, folks. <clears throat> Unless there's persistent spiritual association. Persistent. So what's persistent? Usually three times. Uh, they'll warn him on the first time. So the kid goes out with his disassociated brother, the brother that left their religion, for no, no apparent reason. He, maybe he didn't want to die with, about a blood transfusion. He doesn't like that crap. Wants to keep living. Leaves the religion. The brother goes to the movie with him once. He gets a warning goes twice, he's going to get another warning. He goes a third time, he's going to be DF'd. Yeah, unless there's persistent. That's what they call persistent three times. Spiritual, and they call it spiritual, even though he went to a movie, they'll call it spiritual. 
or he persists in openly criticizing the disfellowship situation. You know, so if he came back and said, you know, my brother did nothing wrong. Why was he, did, why was, why is he treated? He's, he just left. He's disassociated. But why is he treated the same as a disfellowshipped person? If he said that, you're criticizing the, the whole arrangement. You're going to be DF. It's right in the elders book. So there's a ton of stuff on disassociation and how I just read one piece of it. One piece of it. There's 55 pieces in this, in this elders book. Moving to other congregations, they follow you. Uh, judicial committees, however, no times. You know, once you're disassociated, they don't give you a, a, a chance to appeal. Uh, there's different rules that apply. So we cover the elders book, folks. Uh, this is the elders book. It's the Shepherding the Flock book. It's the 2024 edition. And uh, we cover this every Monday nights, chapter by chapter. We're almost through it. And we have a playlist on this. So that brings an end to our program. When I say that uh, JW Org is lying, when I say that on this thumbnail, because I'm one of the people in the group there. We can't leave this damn religion without consequences. You can't walk out. And when they pump out articles like this, <clears throat> it's a lie. It's done for the media. It's done for the press. It's done to make them look good. They, according to what I've seen and according to the videos, they have a lot of deleting and changing to do in their religion if they want to make that statement true on the front page of their website. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. Until next time, we just keep telling the truth. We love our neighbors. We love our family. That's what love is. We, we don't, we don't shun them. We don't disfellowship them just because they have another faith or believe in something different than us or have a different political view. We love our friends. We love our family. So keep living your life with love and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.